Nerd Talk. I'm Pixie. I'm Sun. And I'm Parasim. I get to review a game for once. Yeah. Um, it's silly early for you, and for us it's like actually 9 o'clock. Shh. Sorry, was that letting them too much behind the curtain? <laughs> You're breaking the illusion. Illusion nothing. Pixie is probably napping in the studio right now while you're listening to this. I, I'll have you know I have not once napped in the studio. Alright, doing other homework in the studio. Okay, that I will totally cop to. Welcome to us making Pixie's morning easier. <laughs> so what game are you reviewing today, Pixie? Alright, uh, we mentioned last week that we got our hands on the Sims Supernatural expansion pack. And so I've been playing that. And cheaply at that, because Amazon keeps putting them on sale. Uh, yep. Uh, I'm hoping this will still be true by the time this airs, but, uh, for Amazon, via Amazon download, all the Sims 3 expansion packs are on super cheap sale. Really, you just wait every couple weeks and they'll throw them on sale. Like, right now, every Sims download is at least 50% off. As of recording this Monday night, which, I don't know, by Wednesday morning, I think it'd still be on sale. So, I don't know. If you've been interested in The Sims, get it for cheap. Anyhow. So, this one I had been rather reserved about trying for a long time because, I don't know, it just seemed too weird, if that makes any sense. Okay, so in a game where you're doing nothing but messing with people's lives, too weird is a bad thing. So, uh, you still got vampires, which, I mean, I guess you would get vampires if you didn't have the late night expansion, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but whatever. Uh, so you've got vampires, you've got fairies, you've got werewolves, uh, witches. One more. Zombies. There you go. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I was missing, because the zombies nope. I wanted to leave for last. Now you got it. <clears throat> do the zombies have hula grass skirts? They do not. Dang. In fact, it's the they pretty much... The zombies are probably the most annoying thing in this expansion. Not even gonna lie. Not gonna argue that. And they're the one you can toggle, like, there's a little checkbox in the options menu for each of the supernatural elements. So if you decide, I don't want to have werewolves in my game, or I don't want to have fairies, or whatever, you can do that. And is that just in a settings menu, or yeah. is that sort of contextualized in-world? No, it's in a menu. However, if you're unhappy with any Sims specialness... Uh, you can have Sims make various cures for the supernatural Sims, and even uh, there are elixirs that even switch what type you are af uh, for a pre-existing Sim. Yeah, the um, but the zombies are the most annoying of the bunch, and they don't have one of those checkboxes. You are stuck with. Them. Yeah, no. If if you own the Sims supernatural, zombies are just going to crop up on full moons. Yeah, and you can, I suppose change the lunar cycle, and so I guess if you just don't want there to be zombies, you would just never let it be a full moon. Remove the full moon? Yeah. That's that's a potential. Still, it's rather annoying. Um, as they crop up, and they attack your sims, and if they can't attack your sims, like if they're inside or whatever, because... They'll just stand outside moaning for hours. Uh, no, they will attack your garden. Oh, see, that's not a problem, because mine's walled in. See, I had to build a gate around mine after this, but they destroyed my prized apple trees, and... The Sim Supernatural, forcing you to think about zombie to home defense. Uh, actually, it's there's a special item in the limited edition, uh, a pea shooter, and so you can set that thing up in your front yard, and it will shoot at the zombies, and the zombies will attack that first. And that's your first line of defense. So they can either the pea shooter cures the zombie, or if the pea shooter fails, like if the zombie destroys it before it works, um, then you know it destroys that and then moves on to you, your garden and then moves on to Sims. Like that's its list of priorities for attacking things. See, my solution is always just have my witch walk outside and blast it with a sunlight uh, charm, which cures the zombie and adds a new Sim to my neighborhood. Is this pea shooter literally the pea shooter from, from Plants, Plants vs. Zombies? It is. Yes. Okay. Which is what I was trying to get at before Sen started to interrupt me. <laughs> Anyhow, the zombies are, uh, at, thankfully, a rare annoyance. They only crop up, they just sprout out of the ground on a full moon. And apparently the way they work is they're just regular people most of the time, and then they transform on a full moon type of thing. 
and they're stuck like that for two days unless you've like got one that's otherwise been permanently transformed like via your magic. Yeah, I do that to people. Uh, you've played with the magic users a lot more than I have, so I can yes. toss that into your court. I, I've mastered the magic users. So, uh, essentially, a sim can either be born a witch, which that's the only way that they refer to them. They don't do the warlock designation for males. Um, uh-huh. But your character has a magical ability bar that they level up the same as any skill. It's just not listed in the skills menu. It It's just... A non-active, I think is what it's referred to as. And it gives you a few different options. Uh, When you initially start, your sim is able to conjure apples, either normal or poison variety. And from there, you learn how to uh, do various things in the environment. So one of the first spells you learn is the Fire Blast, which can be thrown just in the environment to start a fire, or directly at a sim. Uh, You also learn the Ice Blast ability, About that time, your sims gain the ability to have magician duels, which are really cool when rendered in-game. They look neat. Uh, But that actually turns out to be the easiest way to level a sim's magical ability, because you're actually leveling two sims at once. They're both leveling their magic. Uh, eventually so that's you gain... kind of like pitting two sims in a game of chess against each other uh, yeah. to level up their logic skill. Yep. And they gain a mood lit when they win and when they lose. Uh, it's like plus 15 or minus 15. But uh, eventually you learn more useful abilities like uh, the Bladder Hygiene and Hunger Charm, which, when cast on a sim, fills those bars at the cost of some of your magic ability. Uh, There's also the Love Charm, which wreaks utter havoc on a neighborhood. Uh, Basically, upon casting this on yourself or another sim, the next sim that that uh, sim speaks to will fall madly in love with them. Is that a one-way thing? It ma- No, it's a two-way. Okay. It maxes out the relationship bar for both sims and gives them the love uh, aspect. Yeah, because see, that, that, that was... I was wondering about that because the way that the... Uh, particularly the romantic social interactions work, they have to be mutual. You can't... Yeah, it, it does that to both of them mm-hmm. when they talk to each other. The issue is it doesn't bother to check for any previous uh, standing relationships. Like, it it doesn't work with family members, thankfully. Like, you can't have a mother cast it, uh, and then, like, the child walks up and talks to her, because that would be horrible. Uh, But, like, it doesn't say, check, oh, Sim is married, or uh, Sim is in other relationship. And, in fact, uh, havoc occurs when the Sim starts casting it just randomly, on their own. Admitted, it, it's a rare occurrence. It's only happened two or three times, but my witch just up and decided that she wanted to go cast uh, cast that spell on her son, who next talked to the maid. Uh, awkward. Right. Suddenly, this has turned into a harem anime. Yeah, it it's really bad when they start doing it on their own, and I wish EA had given me the ability to tell them what spells they can cast. Uh, you could just shut their free will off. I mean, that means that they won't do anything else, but... Right. I, I like them doing things on their own. It's just I don't want them doing that randomly, because it kind of destroys the infrastructure of my neighborhood. That would be why I turned witches off. <laughs> right. Um, no, I like having witches in my game. I think it's a lot of fun to see people yeah. racing around on brooms randomly. Like, if there was one that I would actually turn off in the game, it would probably be the werewolves. You know, I haven't encountered one at all, and I've been playing... You apparently haven't gone to the Elixir shop. Yeah, fair enough. In my game, there's one that actively runs it. Also, my first maid was a werewolf. Yeah. Like, I I started a game in Moonlight Falls, which is the town that comes with uh, the expansion. It It's just full of Twilight jokes. That, that's pretty much the entire thing. Um, there's the Swain family, and Belinda Swain is the... Uh, first daughter in the family. Like, it, it's loaded with the jokes. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot that's enjoyable in Supernatural. Like, I really love all of the new uh, house decorations, and alchemy is incredibly fun and an easy way to cheat without cheating. So, for instance, you can make an elixir that the potent friendship elixir, which, upon throwing at a sim, it just maxes both of your friendships. Um... There's the Midas Touch Elixir, which will turn anything your 
Sim touches into gold. And then they starve to death because they're trying to eat their food and it turns to gold. And then when they pick up the baby... <laughs> yeah. No, wait, is that is that legit a thing? No, we're sticking we're sticking to the sim rule that uh, babies are invulnerable. Ah. So, for instance, you can't have your vampire sim eat the baby. <laughs> Actually, the, the vampire sims can't feed on anything uh, that isn't in their age group or above. So, for instance, a young adult vampire cannot feed on a teen or lower. Mm. Now, I actually really like the changes that they made to vampires in this version. They gave them more powers. They can, uh, they can hypnotize. They can read minds. They can intimidate like you wouldn't believe. Um, they can make other sims think of them, which will draw them over. Oh, there, there's actually a lot of really cool abilities on the vampire now. Yep, I've been playing around with the vampire for a bit. It's actually pretty cool. This is like, oh geez, I get I get like ninety days in my young adult cycle now. Awesome. And it's actually possible for uh, thirty five hundred uh, sim achievement points. I forget what they call them. Lifetime happiness points or whatever. For thirty five hundred, your uh, vampire sim can actually gain the immortal trait. I'm pretty sure that's thirty five thousand, actually. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry. Because yes, there are no 000. lifetime happiness rewards less than five thousand, and those are the my low bad. end ones. My bad, misspoken. Um, yeah, 35,000, you get Immortal, which stops the Sims aging unless you manually do it from a birthday cake and makes them immune to uh, sunlight. So, in fact, when you put them out in the sunlight, they gain the sparkly moodlet, which is plus 25 happiness. However, you told me there was another side effect to that. Yeah, Sims make fun of your sparkliness. <laughs> which just amuses me to no end. Um... So yeah, that that's vampires and uh, witches. I really like the and witches. Zombies. I think they we've covered some. they add a they add a lot to the game. Uh, werewolves. Have you played with a werewolf? Because I have. I, like I said, I've hardly I haven't even seen one yet. I haven't touched. Or I haven't played as the werewolves yet. I've seen them acting around. Um, one destroyed my couch. Yeah, apparently they've got compulsions to like destroy furniture. Um, yep, particularly destroy furniture, when new, get they, in fights, forced to transform. At full moons and like really early on, and I guess they get more in control the more transformations they go through. Yep. Um, so basically, alters your shim your shims <laughs> your sims facial structure, uh, changes how they look a bit. You get kind of beastly, a little furry. Um, your table manners go out the window. Yeah, you basically gain the slob trait, just guaranteed. Um, have a tendency to claw at furniture, pick fight with other sims. Uh, your character will run on all fours, so you actually gain speed when you're in werewolf form. Uh, and it allows you to find any ingredient, pretty much, for uh, elixir brewing. Uh, you can hunt down collectibles, too. Yep. Mm -hmm. And as you get more in control of those powers, uh, you can search for specific collectibles, like, I want to look for insects, or I want to look for gems, or whatever. Yeah, with, with the exception of the vampire, all of the sims level up their unique abilities. Uh, vampires are still just pretty much the same. Uh, they get just super strong at night, and that's about it. And they feed on blood. Uh, they also get an energy boost at night. Yes. Uh, but all of the others actually level up their new abilities. Uh, fairies in particular. Uh, they have different auras they can project and can perform fairy pranks and set traps. And they can also give buffs. It's not all yep. bad. They give a nice buffing aura that they can put out. Um, there's actually, I was going through the new uh, lifetime achievement want things. You know, it's like when you make a sim or when they age to an adult, they're like they're a teenager or whatever, they pick the one thing that they want to achieve with their life. And uh, one of them is that uh, a fairy can choose to basically help other sims find their inner beauty, which is like get 10 charisma, and then cast a thing on them. Mm -hmm. Unlike so many other sims. So, I mean, there's there's helpful fairies as well as less so. Um, what I also found was that some of these conditions stack, like, zombie stacks with all of the other ones, so you could have a fairy zombie. It's a little bit weird. Yeah, zombie is the, the trait that actually stacks on top of anything. Um, most of the supernatural types, you have to pick one. Uh, so, for instance, the 
uh, Alchemist has the ability to make potions that actually add that trait to any existing sim. Uh, you can make someone a vampire, werewolf, witch, uh, zombie, and the sad clown, which is terrifying. Like, apparently that is a horrible thing you can do to someone. Oh my gosh, I'm looking at the Sims wiki, there's a hybrid page so that you can see what all the different combinations are for stacking these weird conditions. Yeah. Vampire imaginary friend. That sounds atrocious. Oh my god. Okay, so although an imaginary friend cannot become a vampire, a vampire and an imaginary friend can have a hybrid baby together due to a glitch where the game does not clean up the invisible imaginary friend trait. Okay, that sounds really creepy. Yep. The imaginary friend is already the worst thing to ever happen. It's really so. creepy and terrible, and I kind of hate it. <laughs> yeah, th this is what unsold me a copy of the... Uh, Sims 3 Generations. The Generations expansion. Like, I will buy any other expansion for this game that... Even Katy Perry's Showtime? I would rather I'm buy Katy right Perry's... I'm for $10. I would rather buy Katy Perry's Showtime because I respect her as an artist. I'm sorry, I can't say that with a straight face. Katy Perry, <laughs> now we have it on tape. <laughs> yeah. No, I I would actually be more likely to buy Showtime or or Pets before I consider adding imaginary friends to my world. Pets However, I, I, like I will pets. say the the cover art of Pets in which Death is riding a horse is pretty epic looking. Yeah, watching like Death take like your old pets, like there's a stray cat that died on my front porch, which is kind of sad. That sounds horrible. <laughs> Like, Death just shows up on the lawn and picks up the pet? Oh, no, no. It, it, death shows up, and then, like, gets, like, a little squeaky mouse toy. Oh, and, and then, like, That's throws still it, horrible! And then, like, throws it, and then, like, the cat jumps off after it into the ether. That's atrocious! <laughs> it's kind of adorable in a weird way. No, I've always liked the death animations in The Sims. The Grim Reaper character is kind of weirdly... Charming? Yeah, he's a Grim Reaper, but he's, he's, he's all right. Yeah, through use of the uh, alchemy potions, my vampire is best friends with death. No, that's pretty so, cool. So, can you have a baby with death? Because that sounds like I I haven't that gotten him to happen. hang around for very long. That's the only problem with it. Yeah, you know he's the way constantly busy. He gotta run. Well, he he stuff. hung out just long enough for her to huck an elixir at him. Ah. Uh. The way it worked in The Sims 2 is that you could have uh, relationships with death, and in fact, the hula zombies that came with death, if you got a if you had a super high lifetime achievement sim who died. But those were like universal game objects that were preserved across saves and everything. And so if like one of those was in the world and somebody died, then the game would crash and all your saves would be corrupt. Aww. It, it, it would, you could do it, but it would have negative consequences. Your but game it was pretty cool. load. I, I had a relationship with a hula zombie, despite the consequences. And then my Pyro game crashed clearly and I didn't value again. his game. <laughs> um, interesting things that have been added: uh, the magic mirror item, which will actually chat back with you when you talk to it. Uh, great way to increase charisma. The skeletal maid Bone Hilda. Yeah. So in I, case I I keep dismissing her because I don't want her interacting with the baby for some reason. It's like weaves me out you a know, little bit. They they told me that they wanted to buy one, and I just put it in a room by itself and removed the door. You realize you can, like, dismiss it whenever, and she'll, like, go just kind of chill in her little closet. I, I don't want them touching it. My I like said kind of strategy, dumb. how simmy it is. It's like, yeah, this is... You can't put Sims in the pool and remove the ladder anymore, but this is the next best thing. Yeah. Just However, put you in a room I, with no door. I did totally buy myself a, uh, a llama... The teleporting phone booth. It, it's basically a TARDIS for your Sims. Oh, oh, so this is all caps, L-L-A-M-A. -A. Yes. That's pretty awesome. So, yeah, that, that now exists in the game and you can have it, which it's a nice addition to the time machine that actually existed in uh, Ambitions that your inventor Sims could build that would actually unlock outfits as you traveled forward and back in time. Or uh that... Does this actually have any interactive component, or is it like the time machine that already existed, where you just kind of go into it, and maybe there's a text box, and then you come back out of it, and there are consequences, but you don't see anything? You go into it, there's a text box, and it teleports you wherever you want it to go. Oh, so so it's got the relative dimension in space, but not time in the interactive way. 
Uh, let's see. Have we missed anything? I don't know what else there is to cover. Um, we talked alchemy. We talked uh, new decorations for the house. All the new uh, character types. Um, an interesting thing for the witches, if you have small animals uh, or cats in the house, their magic is actually improved. Yeah. Um, has less of a chance of failing. Um, your Sims skin you color palette. Crazy cat lady. The color palette is now completely open, so you can now have a skin with like deep blue. Uh, Dude, you could have uh, had that for a while. Skin. Yeah, but that was a mod before, wasn't it? No. Um, in Creative Sim, that, that has been available to me before this point. I can't remember at what expansion, but I could make like blue or green skinned Sims. Eh, fair enough. Was wild hair always available in the base game? Oh uh, yeah, you can open up a color wheel and just set everything to whatever. Alright. I don't know if you recall, but the founding character in my current legacy that I'm playing had bright pink hair. Yeah. Um, while Sims used to be color-coded based on how they died... They totally still are, by the way. The ghosts. But now, like, they have more to them, like... There's effects. Um, um, yeah, there's now effects on the dead ghosts. That has, again, um, always been the case. You just probably haven't noticed. Uh, Fair enough. Drowned Sims have, like, a rippling effect, in the, but they don't leave puddles all over the place like they did in The Sims 2, which was annoying. Um, electrocuted ones have, like, little sparks on them. Uh, it also affects the ghost behavior, too. Like, Sims that burn to death will, like, be constantly trying to, like, take showers and stuff to put out what they think is themselves still on fire. Yeah, pretty much everyone who comes to my house, ghosts included, just insist on making a beeline straight for the uh, the rocking chair, which is a new item that was added in this expansion that everyone wants. Everybody's all like, you. There is a weird obsession with rocking chairs in this game. But yeah, uh, I'm enjoying it. I think it's a, a solid expansion. It, it bothers me that, uh, what is it, part of the... What is it? Uh, the renown system, the the fame system from oh, celebrity. Night. Yeah, the celebrity system. Thank you. Uh, has a negative connotation put on the supernatural sims. So my vampire sim got a negative hit to her celebrity for woohooing with a witch because that's a supernatural and those are bad. When she is a vampire. But for some reason, vampires are hot, but witches aren't. No, because later the witch got the same thing for uh, being bitten by the vampire. So it's just you can't interact with supernaturals other than yourself or other than your own type? Well, I'm also getting negative ones for being a supernatural sim. Like, there's always the option of confess to being a witch or confess to being a vampire as if it's a horrible thing. Or that you can deny it. Yeah, or you can deny it or you can ask your significant others to forsake what they are. As part of the romance option for them? Yeah, it doesn't sound all that romantic to me. Hey, this core thing that you are that's pretty awesome, just give give that up for me. Man, this really is kind of Twilight-based. Oh, right. Uh, actually, uh, one of my vampires has a uh, option in the um, romance sub uh, social interaction menu where you can confess to watching the person sleep. Yeah, that one's oh. a bit creepy. I've seen that one, too. I was like, I've been controlling this one since birth. They've never watched anyone sleep. No, you didn't. <laughs> yeah. You were asleep first. You're a liar. <laughs> Basically. Uh, but they did add uh, a couple extra moodlets that occur over long periods of time. I don't know if these came in during Supernatural, but I'd never seen them before. Uh, basically, one of my Sims got a positive 25 moodlet for being eternally loyal to her partner. Just basically not seeking any other relationships after so many days. Uh, the Sim just got this permanent 25 moodlet. Kind of a weird thing to add. So hold on. I was just looking up the release date for The Sims 3 University Life, which is March 5th. Yeah. And in the same screen where I'm looking at this, I see that Sim City is released on March 5th. And Tomb Raider is going to be released on March 5th. Oh, shoot, I'm picking that up. I'm going to be freaking busy. I, I'm curious to hear uh, about your interest in that, Pixie, because you had previously had negative things to say about the way it was marketed. And I still do, but I'm hoping... Their publicity guys are just idiots. It, in a way, yes. 
Um, I was hoping to see, and this is going to sound like super melodramatic and like kind of self-centered, so da, 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 the pyro use your discretion for what you want to cut here, but uh, I wanted to see myself in Lara. I wanted to see a determined woman who, despite how many times she gets the crap kicked out of her, keeps getting back up. I still want that. I'm hoping that that's still what she is and that the guys who've been speaking on the behalf of the game have just been putting their foots in their collective mouths. Sort of hope. And boy, boy have they, because I feel the exact same way, and to some extent I was not uh, concerned with the... Uh, I was not put off by the terrible situations that they tended to put Lara in on the basis of... Uh, that's the nature of storytelling, is you tend to put people in terrible situations and develop a better understanding of those situations as a result. And so uh, talking about them is not intrinsically bad. You just have to handle it well. And basically nobody does. <laughs> and the thing that had me totally, totally unsold yeah. on Tomb Raider was, the uh, guy, was John uh, Rosenberg's quote oh, uh, yeah, that... This one. And I quote verbatim, When people play Lara, they don't really project themselves into the character. They're more like, quote, I want to protect her, quote. There's this sort of dynamic of, I'm going on this adventure with her and trying to protect her. And that quote is what, yeah. okay, now now I'm done here. Like, the fact that you are portraying rape and other other terrible things is not intrinsically game over, but that quote means, no, you're done, you can't handle this material. And, well, and the argument that Sen was making that marketing and development are totally unrelated fields done by different people, and that John Rosenberg is a, not necessarily the screenwriter for this, is merely a promotional person. Well, executive producer was his title at the time, I believe he lost it since then, rightfully so. Uh, but... Video games are such large projects that no one person controls all of it, and maybe there are some people with some much grander ideas at the center of the project. And boy, I am eager to see. So, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm willing to give it a chance that perhaps the person speaking for it was not qualified to do so. Right. Anyways, what I was bringing up is the fact that University Life, uh, Tomb Raider... And Sim City are all coming out at the same time. I, I first saw this with Sim City and University Life, and I was thinking, okay, this is both EA games, and EA is really kind of shooting themselves in the foot by uh, people go out into a game store with one paycheck and buy one game, and probably there's going to be a market that's going to want either Sim City or University Life. They're competing with themselves. But now that I see a third game on the exact same day, that's a fairly significant AAA game. There's something happening March 5th that I'm not aware of? Not that I was aware of. It's just a big release date for that happens to be falling on, that a bunch of stuff happens to be falling on as far as I'm aware. Hmm. Random coincidence. Well, the dumb speculation I was about to make is next generation consoles. That's almost definitely way too soon, uh, but we have a lot of information about next generation consoles coming soon. Uh, well, we have a lot of speculative information. We don't know... It's not like it's been confirmed. Granted, nobody's come out and said, no, that's totally not the case, but... Well, what we do know for sure is that there will be a PlayStation event on February 20th, and Sony will be live-streaming it through their official website, which, it, irrespective of the fact that this is definitely going to be the announcement of the PlayStation 4, I am super psyched that companies are taking this sort of direct public relations approach, because for a long, long time, press conferences have been only for the press, and not accessible by anybody other than the press. And that sort of does not jive with my internet sensibilities. I'm a very democratic sort of person where everybody is of a similar rank to everybody else, and I can write something and post it on the internet just as well as uh, Stephen Totillo can. I mean, Stephen Totillo has a huge audience as the executive editor of Kotaku, but fundamentally what he does is create some text and post it. And that's the same operation that I can do, or Sen can do, or you, the listener, can do for free. Yeah, realistically, the only person that loses out by Sony doing this is the, like, three people who still run print media. <laughs> yeah. 
and, you know, like established, this sort of takes the audience away from Kotaku or Giant Bomb or whoever else will be doing secondhand coverage of this uh, for the audience that is dedicated enough to just watch the event itself. Uh, but it allows the company to communicate directly with the audience, so maybe there's less room for lies there, or maybe there's more room for uh, journalistic suspicion to not prevent lies. I'm not really sure yet. I mean, places like Kotaku and Giant Bomb will still definitely exist, but... Well, this is traditionally the kind of announcement that would be saved for, like, say, E3. Right. When they're sharing the weekend with the three other major gaming companies. And that's another situation where March 5th, where you kind of lose the opportunity to monopolize people's attention because there's a lot of other things for them to be paying attention to. Right. I'm kind of speculating that this announcement is very early, like maybe uh, Christmas 2013 launch date for what they're actually announcing, and they're going to show us not very much in terms of specifics at the event, but Sony is super eager to be the first console out after uh, the 360 came out ahead of the PS3, and then kind of for the first three or four years of the console cycle had a huge leg up as a result. I'm also excited for what this means for PC games, because uh, speculation is 8 gigs of system memory for the PlayStation 4, and up from the 256 megabytes. Let's see, that's a 4 times 8, 32-fold increase in memory, and that's, that's towards something that an actual PC would have instead of just an infinitesimal amount that developers have been working their way around for a long, long time. So, who's ready for this just to be the psych we're just announcing Sony Battle Royale 2? Uh, interestingly, that would... Well, okay, there's the company. I have to look it up. I think it's a, a little bit funny that we're having uh, all this stuff happen basically a year to the day from uh, when Mass Effect was released. Like, it's a good time to game. It's like, game developers love that first week in March now. I don't know. Oh, oh, I know why. Okay. Pixie, you have answered my question. What's happening at the beginning of March? The fiscal quarter ends in March, and so people need people need their games to come out before the end of March so that they can prove profits for the stockholders. That's what it is. Ah, well, I was like, but uh, and I was like, is it something to do with GDC? No, that's at the end of March. Like I'm, I was sitting here scratching my head, and of course, the obvious thing totally escaped me. I, I didn't think of it either until until you just mentioned March is March as a whole instead of March 5th. That's what I was focused on that was distracting me. But yeah, it's normally... Forest from the trees. Normally this is kind of a... Yep, exactly. Normally this is kind of a dead period for games because everybody wants to push their stuff out before Christmas uh, uh, so that no, they can I get would, the... No, spring, spring hasn't been so bad. Spring isn't so bad. It's Summer is when it's dead. <laughs> okay, yeah. I guess the, the narrative for that is that Everybody's trying to get their games out for Christmas, and then the people who fail get their games out for the quarter, and then everything is done by the time summer is out. So we've Except already had like, our fallback release date. Games like uh, Animal Crossing for the 3DS, where uh, they just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, and then it'll never come out. Despite the fact that it's already out in Japan, and has been for like over a year. I'm, I'm still bitter. This 3DS thing you speak of... Pixie quit making stuff up. <laughs> Pixie isn't lying. There really is a, a thing called the 3DS. It's true. It exists. Nintendo made a portable 3D handheld console. I, I own one. The first of its kind. It came out like two years ago. <laughs> Pokemon game on it or it doesn't exist. Pokemon game coming out for it. Well, then currently it's not a thing. It's a thing in progress. So unrelated to anything, I was totally miffed by the discovery that the original DS had an alarm clock functionality built into it, and on my recently purchased 3DS, there is no native alarm clock unless you buy one for $2 on the eShop. Way to go, Nintendo. Well, it's because the original DS did not have the eShop. <laughs> so they would have been ripping us off the whole time, they just didn't get the chance. I don't know, the alarm clock feature on a console that can be turned off sounds pretty silly, to be honest. Um, uh, actually, it would work from its sleep mode. Again, sleep yeah, mode, think, not off. I think Paul used to do that, as I recall. Didn't he? Yes, he definitely did. That was his, like, his only alarm clock. 
And I'm, I'm so uh, glad we get to bring up Paul on a podcast about the mythical 3DS software, but sure. Because <laughs> we won't be discussing it in our review of Charles Barkley's Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. Certainly not. Coming 2015. For the 3DS. No, no, it's not. Um, but anyway, a uh, long time ago, I was going to say that Sony cut off their contract with Superbot Entertainment, the developer of PlayStation All-Stars. So, it would be very difficult for them to do a new Battle Royale unless they did it in-house, which I suppose wouldn't be totally crazy. But they no longer do business with the original developer. Apparently, it was not as much of a sales success as they were hoping. Although Sony sort of seems to have a history of doing business with developers and then cutting off their contracts at the last minute and just being like, oh yeah, now you're all going to be unemployed. Sucks to be you, stupid Sony. So, do either of you think that you're going to be buying a next generation console? And if so, which one? Well, I'll likely pick up a PlayStation 4 provided there are games on it because I've had good luck with Sony devices so far. But apart from my PlayStation 3 that decided to die while watching X-Men First Class. But overall, it's it's been a nice console. Um, I like the way Sony handles themselves. I like the way that Blu-ray has run, as opposed to uh, my 360, which, you know, my... I, ne I never tried HD DVD, but Blu-ray works just fine. My excitement about next-generation consoles is largely, well... The games are going to be great, but I'm excited for the consoles to have services built in at a really deep level, because one of the things the 360 always had that the PlayStation did not uh, is, like, party chat is voice. I, I guess I'm sort of uh, rewriting history to say that the 360 always had party chat, because that was an addition. Uh, but the 360 had much better uh, Xbox Live features much longer than the PlayStation did. Just good voice chat and text chat and, like, online achievements. Something like, Pixie, what was the name of the statistics thing for Halo? Oh, BungieNet. Which is not a thing anymore because Bungie doesn't do Halo, but, you know, at the time, it was really cool. I'm excited for that to be the norm rather than the exception. And as I said that I'm a huge internet-type democ democratized society person... I really love the idea of live streaming being built into these consoles because that has been a lot of speculation is that they'll build some sort of video encoder into both or one of these consoles and just allow you to record the video of your gameplay as a totally native feature without having to do crazy hacks like every Let's Player has so far. And that sounds amazing. A specific speculation I've heard in the PlayStation department would be that it'd have like a 30-minute loop, and that if something cool happens to happen, then you can go back and retroactively tell it to save that video. And that sounds amazing. Just, that's going to change the face of the internet if, if modern technologies like this, if internet awareness is built into these consoles when it, the internet was not the same thing it is now when the PlayStation 3 and Xbox Xbox 360 were first released. I'm looking at this link to the uh, rundown of the alleged tech specs of the next Xbox codenamed Durango. Having I, I'm, I'm having mixed feelings about the built-in new version of the. There's a new version of the Connect bundled with every Durango, and that the unit doesn't work without it. I, I can and totally... does it look like it's going to be a, a like a physically separate? device, or is it going to be built into one single box? Is it two boxes or one box? I'm, I'm reading this. It says, a new version of the Connect motion control sensor array will be included with every Durango sold. The unit seems far superior to the one currently found on the Xbox 360, blah blah blah, not optional, it's mandatory. Not only does a Connect ship with every console, but it must be plugged in and calibrated for the console to even function. Uh, it's probably still a separate unit. It's a better camera, but it's still a separate camera. Um, the... The idea behind it being that if we know everybody's going to have one, then developers can just be guaranteed that you can code for this. As opposed to where we're at now, where it's like, nobody has a Kinect, and so nobody's developing for a Kinect, and so nobody, since nobody's developing for the Kinect, then there are no games that use the Kinect, and so nobody's buying them, and just a circle. A lot of situations exist such that the ecosystem argument really does prevent the development of a platform like 
say having a Windows phone isn't necessarily very good because there's not a lot of apps for it. Uh, but I feel like, yeah, okay, you want to have on a Windows phone some sort of photo editing photo photo editing app to use with your social media Twitter app, and those things are going to work together because you're going to post that photo on Twitter. But I feel like Connect does not have as strong an argument for that because uh, one good game for Connect should be able to stand out and be good without respect to the fact that it is the only good game for Connect. And, like, Fable the Journey was not able to be that, and nothing else has either. So, I, I feel like the Kinect probably will improve dramatically with the better resolution of this camera, but I bet, I don't think this is going to be a terrible thing. Like, I bet the new Kinect mandatory integration is going to be a waste of money, and the practical consequence of it is going to be that the new Kinect will not get very much use. Like, nothing sinister will happen other than... It'll just kind of hang around and be useless. But it's still a piece of hardware that developers are putting a lot of time and money into creating features for that most people don't end up caring about. So well, realistically, least... for the gaming industry, it would be better for this device to just go away. Yeah, I feel like for first-party developers, there it will be a waste of time. But I feel like for third-party developers, it'll go the way of the six-axis. And third-party developers will six months later be like, okay, we're just going to totally pretend this thing doesn't exist. Just forget yeah, I, about it. I can't say the last time I actually used the six-axis in my PlayStation 3. I think it was that time I played Lair. You know, it's kind of creepy having a Microsoft-controlled kind of black box proprietary camera in your living room, staring at you at all times. And tracking you constantly. Yeah. Because those things are on and tracking your movements, no matter, like, even if you're not playing a game with them. The current it knows what you're that. doing. It's really creepy. Uh, I bet there will be a hacking incident where something does go sinister with this. Like, it'll be small and isolated, and, like, one rogue party will hijack, like, three connects and steal illicit video off them. I don't think it'll be a widespread this thing. This Kotaku article goes on to say that the new version of the camera will be able to track up to six individual skeletons in the room at the se at all times. Uh, Great, but so I now I can see through skeletons. my skin, too. Dude, it's been tracking your skeleton from the beginning. That's how it works. Uh, remember, I sold mine after using it once. Uh, obviously, Jeff you know, sold having... a skeleton. <laughs> obviously having uh, multiplayer implications, because, you know... Now you can track more than two people at once, but... Although, who has that much space? God. Yeah. Only applicable should... to people with 50 by 50 foot uh, open areas for their gaming rooms. So, like, no one. Four serious. Uh, let's see. Could also be related to a recently patented Microsoft system for monitoring and maybe even charging users based on who is watching what. Uh, uh that's just about the worst idea I've ever heard. We're sorry, you had three people watching that movie you uh, downloaded? We're going to need to charge you for Which would violate the license, I guess. This sounds <laughs> like the single worst idea ever. That's Microsoft. That is something that companies would want to do and is completely terrifying. And I certainly hope the market would not support in any way and it would just fall through immediately. Like, maybe this would be an ill-advised attempt where, yeah, you pay 99 per... 99 cents per person who's trying to watch Ice Age 2, and, uh, here, and then... Here we go. The, the, here's the patent application. Here's reading straight from uh, Microsoft's patent application. Uh, the technology, briefly described, is a content presentation system and method allowing content providers to regulate the presentation of content on a per-user view basis, which means based on who is watching it. Uh, no, per-user is... okay. per view? That... Content Isn't is distributed to use? consuming devices, you know, your TV, basically, uh, with an associated license option on the number of individual consumers or viewers oh, allowed to consume the content. The limitation may comprise a number of user views, a number of user views over time, a number of simultaneous user views. Oh my god, how many people this you can have terrible. in the room to watch it at once. Yeah, <laughs> say goodbye to movie night. <laughs> Views tied Jim, to... you can't be in here. We're Wait. watching a movie. Views tied to user identities. Views limited to user age. So goodbye to, you know, underage teenagers trying to get at porn, I guess. Because um, they so host that on uh, the Xbox Marketplace. Do you never know? It could be a future thing. 
Wait, never mind, I take it back, they have splice. Well, you, you know, one of the features I was yet. saying would happen as a result of these consoles being designed in an era where the internet is what it is now is that they're definitely going to have browsers built into them. Like, yeah, Internet Explorer for the 360 is a gold feature, but, like, a really good browser has got to be a native feature of both of these next-generation consoles. So, yes, porn is a realistic possibility. Uh, the, the patent continues. Uh, consumers are presented with a content selection and a choice of licenses allowing the consumption of the content. Again, this sounds like the worst idea ever. Hey, tell me how many people are going to be watching. All right, but if you lied, I'm going to charge you more. 99 cents for each the teenager users, watching wait, Ice Age 2, is, but two is... bucks for every 20-something watching Ice Age 2. Last, last sentence here. The users consuming the content on a display device are monitored so that if the number of user views licenses is exceeded, remedial action may be taken. Yeah, so someone walked into the room or came over, you just got charged 99 cents. So Kotaku then posits, Connect is never mentioned specifically, but seeing as a camera is going to need to track and identify people in the room, it really can't be anything else. Okay, this is potentially cool if I'm going to be charged less because I'm the only person renting this movie. Like, if it's like, well, normally this would be eight ninety nine for yeah, the rental. But yeah, what happens when, like, you're watching, say, like, Archer on Netflix or whatever, and then yeah, I and show then up. Some, and then someone comes over. Yeah. Right. Like, potentially was an okay idea until it's like, yeah, we're going to penalize you for more people being there. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're being too social. Pay money. On one level, conceptually, this is the same billing model that a movie theater uses, because... But it's in your house. Well, exactly. I'd say that the use case that this sort of ignores is putting Top Gear on and then not watching it. Which is something that I do all the time. Right, like, it's good background noise. And the reason that that's so viable on Netflix is because you don't pay per user or even per view. It's just a thing you can do without any consideration. Right. This adds a lot more decision-making to the consumer process, which is why I figure the market... What I, why I hope the market won't support it. And if it tries, the, it will... If it's tried, it will fail quickly. Th this sounds like the worst idea ever for parents... Hey, denote if your kids are going to be coming into the room for the next few hours, because if they do, you're getting charged. Uh, if you Mom, guys want to look Mommy at and that Daddy are watching a movie. To... You can't come in, not because it's not appropriate for you, but because we don't want to pay for you to see it. Otherwise, you have to hide for th from the Connect. which good luck on that. Well, thank you, Pixie. I will include this in the video as an annotation. Ah, uh, our uh, patent? Excellent. Yes, our patent. We are Microsoft. I'm actually we a Microsoft are going to ruin client, your life. Which see, is why I openly support the PS3 so since much. the original Xbox, so... <laughs> Once again, you're making up a thing that doesn't exist. The only Xbox is the 360. Because, man, it's like, most consoles still sort of have a presence. Like, people still talk about the SNES, obviously. I guess that's the most People still fanatically one. love the SNES. But, I mean, people still talk about the Genesis, but as soon as the um, 360 came out... There are countries out, that still sell the Genesis. Microsoft just destroyed all evidence that the original Xbox existed. I it have was not on that shelves. it existed. I still have my original, like, discs for my games, because, I don't know, I thought that maybe I would play them on my 360 at some point. I tried to play... Uh, was it must have been San Andreas? It was some Grand Theft Audio on Grand Theft Auto on the 360. Grand Theft and Audio. It was like, it's like Audio Surf and GTA had a baby. I would play that. That sounds amazing. So you just have to. Okay, the the songs are unlockables, and you get the unlockables by doing Ocean's Eleven style heists. Grand Theft Audio, and then you or play them you on do Audio like Surf. The little like Audio Surf like little rhythm game there, but like for each thing that you get right, like. The little guy on the screen is, like, going around and jacking cars and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> also viable. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a 3DS game. Audio Surf is on one screen, and Grand Theft Audio is on... Uh, Audio. Grand Theft Auto is yeah. on the other screen. <laughs> Hyra, I'm gonna cut in here. The Sega Genesis is still being produced in Brazil. That is ridiculous. It's still Dude, in production. they don't production. even make floppy disks anymore. Like, they and that's cartridges. still in production. Yeah. Oh, you can still buy games. I'm just saying, on a comparative level. Like, this wow. is another more recent 
d- d- uh, ostensibly more ubiquitously used technology that is no longer in production, that is still in production, and less so. But yeah, playing original Xbox games that are software emulated on the 360 is a terrible experience. Do you have a do you have a original Xbox unit, Pixie? Uh, I do not have the unit. I believe I gave it to my step nephew. I still have one. I saw it two weeks ago. Oh, does it work? Uh, it did the last time I plugged it in. Yeah, I gave that Very to cool. my, yeah I gave that to my step nephew like a few oh. years ago. My original 360 is currently sitting in what was my closet at my parents' house. I guess there was a thing called the original Xbox. Yep, I've got one. It's archived. Likewise, I think I still have all of my original Xbox games. I don't think I ever disposed of those. So, yeah, I I think that this will work out nicely, because Pixie will probably wind up with a Durango, and Sen will wind up with an Orbis, and we'll have the same coverage model that we've always had. Am I going to need to get a cream for that? Fill this man with cream. Jeff, we're going to fill you with cream. But I'm on a diet. <laughs> well, cream is very high in calories, so this is going to work is out terribly for idea. you. Now, I plan to make more use of the Zombies Run app starting daily now. Yay! So hopefully the uh, option for the uh, motion tracking will work just as well as the GPS does. And I will not uh, yes, be continuously I have used it eaten with by the zombies. And it works quite well with the accelerometer. I'm eager for Season 2 because I have completed all the story missions of Season 1. And there's a cliffhanger at the end of it. I want to know. Does it involve running? Oh god. <laughs> I, I, I suspect that Season 2 will involve running, yes. That, although, that that is another thing that I would really want, is for a sequel to just be like something totally different from the original. It's zombies sit and eat waffles. <laughs> They're coming. Order another plate. No, it's just it turns it. It just turns into a shooter. I have a weird obsession with waffles right now because we just or we're going to be adding them to work. So I guess that ooh, Wait, that's the your ins- work at a steakhouse is going to be yes. serving waffles. Our new dessert, which we got to try tonight, it was fantastic. Is the strawberry shortcake waffles? I would like a top sirloin in a sandwich between two Belgian waffles, please. Well, I, I had a guy come in tonight, and he's like, do you have filet mignon? I'm like, I'm not sure you know what that means. <laughs> like, all all it is is a steak wrapped with bacon, but he didn't know that. He just thought it sounded fancy. Well, hopefully in two weeks' time, we'll be able to do a review, if not preview, of uh, Nino Kuni. Wrath of the White Witch. I was, was very anyone? excited because, as a result of my studies of Japanese, it, it didn't even occur to me initially that I knew what that meant in Japanese. I recognized all those words. But I was walking around someday, and I overheard somebody saying, I wonder what Ni no Kuni actually means in Japanese. And I was like, wait, that just means second country. I know that. I know all of those words. Yay. Oh my goodness. I'm sure you were very proud of yourself. I was excited. Well, that looks like a very pretty game. Studio Ghibli does the art. And wrote the story. Which is and funny because was... I was just watching a Studio Ghibli movie for the first time last weekend. Oh, which one oh. did you see? Ta-da. Eh, not my favorite. Cat bus. Cat bus is terrifying. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. I had, like, what the dumb f- face plastered on for, like, the it's... entirety of the introduction of that cat bus. <laughs> it's really one of those movies where... Being on something might not be the uh, worst idea. It was cute and kind of reminded yep. me a lot of uh, growing up it, in the country as I did. But it, it's got that. It's a very simple movie compared to like some of the Studio Ghibli epics, like you know Princess Mononoke, which is the plan for this weekend. All right then, have fun with that one. Very different uh, feel. So I'm told. <sighs> Ah, uh, yeah, I had to look it up, but Level 5 is the developer of Nino Kuni, so they're the developers of Professor Layton, and they have a long line of uh, JRPGs going back to the PlayStation 2. Right, well, supposedly it's the first JRPG to get it right in close to a decade, so we'll see. At least domestically released JRPGs, we don't see, like, a quarter of the RPGs that actually come out in Japan. Nino Kuni is available for the PlayStation 3 and Nintendo DS? 
Yep, what? there is a port. Or there will be a port, as it is. Oh, it's it's only available for the DS in Japanese, and yeah. the DS is region locked. Dang it. I was like, I, I can't play it because I don't have a PS3, but I'd want to. I could almost pick up the mobile port, but nope. The 3DS is region locked, you mean? Was the original DS not region locked? No, it wasn't. Because yeah, if is... it was, I wouldn't have been able to play uh, my games because I owned a Japanese DS. Well, dang. I, I own a 3DS. I, I bought my DS while I was living there, so I believe our friend uh, Nathan currently owns that. I'm very excited to hear about Nino Kuni. Nope. Yep. That should not be too long. Uh, otherwise, in the meantime, if I don't have as much time available as as, as I'm anticipating, uh, we still intend to review Devil May Cry, or DMC, or whatever we want to call it. Official title being capital D, lowercase m, capital C, colon, space, Devil May Cry. I'm never calling it that. <laughs> I want you to call it that pronounced that way. Like, specify all of the typography. Just every time you need to refer to that game. It's going to be a very cumbersome process, but this is what I want from you. Fair enough. <laughs> yes, I am the winner. I, I'm not going to argue. I've got nothing. Uh, I don't know. Other news, we've got the official confirmation of what's happening to G4. What's that? G4 is officially becoming the Esquire Network. G4 is officially becoming the... Man, you were very important to me at one point in my life, but everything I love about you is no longer related to you, so it's, I have no affection for you. Quote, the upscale Bravo the for man men. Channel. <laughs> the man channel. <laughs> so does the this we mean, are like, stupid channel. Spike is the low end of the man channel, and Bravo is... Wait, how on earth do you call cheaters and cops reruns upscale for men? Apparently, men are really sleazy. <laughs> oh my. Wow. Pyro, welcome to Gender Stereotyping 101. So glad you could join us. Can BRB castrating myself. BRB burning down uh, G4 Studios. Fair enough. In the meantime, catch up with Adam Sessler on Rev Revision 3. The Sessler Something is a great segment, and I've been watching it regularly lately. Nerd Talk! Where we spend half of our show telling you to go watch other people's shows. <laughs> hey, other people have good stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I am not denying that for a moment. I just think it's funny. I got nothing else. All right, so next week, what are we doing? Again, Nino Cooney if I have tons of time, or Devil May Cry if I have less. Okay. So, hmm. and I won't be down this weekend. I'll be down next. I know it. So you're on your own with that one, because I don't have PlayStation. Uh, unless... Uh, well, Devil May Cry is on the uh, 360 as well. Do you do you really feel like playing uh, Adolescent Dante? No, uh, I guess it really depends on what my workload is like this week with school, too. Yeah, it's like that's kind of important for you. Because it's like, well, I could pick up a... Uh, like the Showtime X Pack or something. Sounds dangerous. That, although that's rather old at this point. Yeah, that one's way old. So that's not really timely. Well, didn't Seasons come out after Supernatural even? Yes. Yeah, it was. So. It was one right after the other. Yeah, that was like a one month difference. Now, unfortunately, there's there's nothing coming to theaters. Hey, to be fair, last week we were incredibly timely. Like Dead Super Space Three came out. That day. Oh, hey, yeah, we do. You only gave us a first look at that. We I'm still continuing. So, I have not picked up any of the microtransaction stuff, as so, I utterly refuse to. We might. You might just be able to like do that and give us a really in-depth look at uh, Dead Space Three. It's possible. I plan to have it done this week. That's an idea too. Ugh. I, I want to contribute something, but I'm like grasping at straws here. Yeah, I want to kind of avoid miniature stuff. I could talk Netrunner if we want to talk a card game. I want to hear about card games. Well, we can do Netrunner then next week, that's a guaranteed, because I've been playing the heck out of that. Who's that from? Is that an indie? Uh, Fantasy Flight. Okay. So that's one of the major publishers. But they basically acquired the license from uh, Wizards and decided that instead of a collectible card game where you have to buy boosters and randomization, they would just release it as a living card game. So you buy the box, and it contains every card. 
Uh, the only problem is, the way they packed it, there are a few cards that it only contains one of, uh, 11 specifically, where you'd have to either buy additional boxes or trade with people. Uh, are there going to be additional cards coming out in the future, like new sets? Yeah, well, there, there are what they call data packs, which the data packs are a little better planned than the original box was, because the way each data pack works is you buy the pack once, it's $15, and it contains three of every card in that data pack. And they're planning on five of them for this, uh, what they're calling the Genesis Cycle. Cool. Well, I'll so, look forward to hearing more about that next week. Yeah, we'll talk about that. More Netrunner. Which means I have to lose more Netrunner. I have won, like, one game of Netrunner since I picked it up. All right, I guess we'll uh, wrap it up there for this week's episode of Nerd Talk. In the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Parasim. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk. <laughs>